Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. We are going to look at Ron Garney today. I opted to actually just shoot a new video rather than edit the other one. I really don't like editing videos and just going through the video and doing it is extremely tedious. And uh, I just went like, you know what? I'm down to look at his work again. And I would rather focus an hour worth of my time on looking at the art than goofing around in an editing program, trying to find little bits and pieces that needed to be trimmed and then pasted back together. So let me do quick housekeeping um, and it'll be in the title. But uh, yeah, the deadline for Blaster Kid color samples uh, getting in is uh, September 16th. So you've got five days to get me your color samples if you'd like to try out. And I got a few samples yesterday and I'll be writing you back um, through the email address to confirm that I received them. But, uh, you know, like I said, don't direct message me about the job. I won't reply. Um, it's just too many private side conversations can get going that way. And um, I just I had to kind of create sort of a rule for it. So I appreciate very, very much. And the coloring submissions have been really, really impressive and very inspiring and just excellent work. So I do appreciate it. And I will write you back and confirm. But yeah, I'm, I can't do the direct message thing with this. There's too many people that have sent me files to to be replying to everyone um, that way. So, um, but uh, I will show everyone's work down the road so that everyone can get um, attention for their work if they, if they wanna be a part of it. So other than that, let's just get into this. I don't wanna waste any time vamping. Oh, I was gonna plug my Patreon though. So look, I know a lot of people are on Patreon and I, I stress this to people. My Patreon has over 565 posts now. I saw that number yesterday. I never check it. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos there. For $1, you can get full access. I have inking videos, I have penciling videos, I have storytelling videos. There's everything you could imagine related to comic books there. And I work at it. It's not something that's just, you know, throwaway stuff that I do or some obligation that once a month I sort of dribble out like a few things. I do it just like a job, you know? I try to upload stuff quite frequently. Obviously, I'm getting more and more busy, but I think that the Patreon itself right now is rock solid for anyone just based on all the work that I've done there over the last year or so, two years, whatever it is. So anyway, check it out. There's tip jars too if you want to come in. $1 will get you full access, but $3 and $5 are also all access and very, very much appreciated. I also do reviews of your work if you want to get a review tier or a direct lesson. So that stuff is still all available. I will say this though, I'm literally on the edge of canceling two of the tiers, which is reviews and lessons. So it's not a threat and it's not a, you know, I've talked about it before. This was almost going to be the last month. So it, it's like, if you're seriously you ever want to get a review from me, you may want to do it now because there's a chance that once I shut it up that I might not ever go back to it. And people that have already paid in advance, don't worry. I mean, I'll follow through with everything that's been set up for you. But yeah, I'm just getting way, way too busy to be able to do um, the lesson and review tier. But I'll do it as long as I can, you know, so you have my word on that. All right, so let's get into Ron Garney. Ron Garney blew my mind a couple of days ago. I, um, it wasn't really directly related to the whole Berserk campaign, to be honest. I was just looking at art and I happened to see, it might have been even this piece or something similar to this. And uh, I went, man, that's really cool. And then I started looking at a little bit more of his work and I was immediately going like, why am I not looking at this guy's stuff more often? Like, it's just, he kind of fell off my radar as some artists will do. It's nothing, you know, it's not like you don't like their work, but... I just hadn't seen his stuff in a long time, and um, I was just completely blown away. I, I, I said this, I think, in yesterday's video, but Ron and Lee Weeks, Ron Garney and Lee Weeks, that is, are probably two of the most impressive artists that I've gotten back into in the past year. Lee Weeks' stuff just completely blew me away. I was, like, so blown away by it. Like, I honestly didn't know what to do for, like, a day. I was just, I couldn't believe how good he drew and how cool his stuff looked. And Ron Garney, in a weird way, is very similar. It's like, these guys are from another planet of just, like, badass drawing. So, yeah, let's get into it. And Ron, if you ever see this video, I, I just, I... 
completely blown away by everything that I've seen. It's so good. So uh, this is fun. All right, so let's go into this. To be careful, I, I I lost a video this morning. I was 10 or 15 minutes into it, and instead of hitting Control W, which will shut the file for me, I hit con Control Q and lost the whole freaking video. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it shut Photoshop and shut every single file I had open. So, originally when I did the video yesterday, <clears throat> I was looking more through colored files from Chinatown. What I thought when I went into this new video was it was honestly a little more interesting to go through his Instagram uh, for a few reasons. One, he shares really nice color files of his work, but the black and white art is what's very, very fascinating to me, and I think where we can get a lot of educational value from it. Um, he's he's blending multiple things here. He's He's laying his stuff out digitally. Um, this is a general statement. I'm not saying that he always lays his stuff out digitally. I get the impression that he lays his stuff out digitally. He does work traditionally, but then at the end, he goes back in digitally and then kind of um, manicures it to a point that he wants where like something like this, where you've got this really, really interesting blend of um, things going on, you know? I don't know if like this gray, if he went in, I would assume that this was done in Photoshop afterwards. So I have a friend, Carl Stianda, he would do stuff like this where he almost slipped on my f keyboard again. Um, I, I think I have it in a weird position. I'm gonna move it for a second so that I don't flub. My desk is sort of full right now, so I have the keyboard at a weird angle. I think that's why I hit the wrong key. Um, yeah, my friend Carlos would do stuff like this. He would take his black and white art and then go in with um, gray, almost like Copic m m markers, but in Photoshop, and really put in all the values before it was colored. So, you know, Ron might be doing a little bit of stuff like that. This looks like just like a texture he dropped in. Um, but, uh, yeah, what's fun about seeing his Instagram is he does show pictures of the finished inks. Um, at times, I swear, I'm like, I'm wondering if it's digital inks. I'm not saying this piece in particular, but there was definitely stuff that I was like, I don't know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look, can't, like these lines right here, these are digital lines. <clears throat> There's no doubt in my mind that that's, that's a, that's a tool, either the marquee tool or the line tool. And I, we'll see as we go along, if he actually shows the program that he's working. This is obviously hand drawn, but yeah, he may, he may, when he prints out his blue line or, uh, I mean, he's clearly not light boxing the whole thing because either this wasn't on the original piece or this was drawn after. And maybe just the figure was again, we're going to try to kind of try to, um, crack this all open as we go through his Instagram and understand what the process might be. I didn't have time to actually look at his comment section because that's sometimes a good way to get information on ours. These look like digital lines too. What's interesting is, is someone asked him directly on a more recent post, are these pieces for sale yet? And he said, no, I haven't put them up yet. The piece I was looking at where that question was under, to me looked like a fully digital piece, but he didn't answer the question as, well, this is a digital piece, so in theory it will never go on sale. So I don't, again, I don't know if it's a blend of, instead of, like you can print out a blue line, but have some of this stuff already inked digitally. I did that with the Dan Fraga job that I did, sort of by necessity. Dan would draw so small and so detailed. So here we go, this is a, a thing. So this looks like traditional inks. Uh, it's hard to say, it's very pixelated, but here's that where he dropped that texture in. But yeah, with Dan's stuff, he drew so small um, and he was drawing this stuff digitally that I, I, when I printed out the blue line, I literally couldn't see what was going on. So what is my cat doing? Sorry, my cat's like trying to get something. What are you doing? Stop it. Oh, it's, you know when you pull paper out of a notebook and there's the little scraggly paper, little pieces of paper that stick to the rings? She's trying to get one of those. Was, I thought she was attacking my sketchbook, which is a no-go. It's where I draw the line between human and cat. And you will feel my wrath. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so, so what I would do is I turn the pages blue in Clip Studio. I would ink for anywhere from one to maybe three or four hours on a page and ink everything that I thought um, would be difficult to see in a blue line. And uh, I even fill in some of the blacks and do some of the background. And uh, it was the only time I've ever done that. But it worked well. You know, I was able to print the piece out, finish the piece traditionally, and then, um, you know, 
it, it looked great printed because everything was on point. You know, these little tiny heads that were the size of a couple of pixels, I was able to go in and do it. But it was an interesting, an interesting process. So this is, here we go. Let's see this. Yeah, so like on a piece like this, I wonder if he even has any of this gray background on his original. I can't imagine that that was done in black ink and he knocks it out. So the piece might be, if we were going to do my little tricky thing that I do, the finished inks might have looked like this. And then he goes in with the gray and even this probably would be gone too. It takes an extraordinary amount of, of layout patience. Oh, that's a little too much. Sorry, I was, I thought I could pull out that gray. It's it's gonna read other pixels as that same shade of gray. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it would take a lot of planning to be able to do this, but look at how beautiful this, this Daredevil figure is. It's so solid and so dynamic and so damn good. Um, this is all real fun stuff with the lines vanishing and and uh i had in the video i mentioned it yesterday that i had removed the color on some of his pieces and i was pointing out how crazy his guns look and here's a good example of like look at the the end of this gun right here how warped and strange looking it is but i promise you when you see it in the actual comic book it probably looks fantastic so it's a combination of him suggesting things and then, um, you know, his colorist sort of uh, blending it in, you know, with hard, harder shapes. But uh, it really works well. And this is all really fun to see. I mean, you can see a little bit of his pencils here still. I mean, it could just be because of uh, when I remove that, it's just some artifacts from that. But yeah, this is pretty nuts. He's really good. You'll hear me say that probably 50 million times throughout this, this video. But uh, I really, like I said, this is like shit that I really... I'm just so blown away by how good he is. <laughs> I I said in my messed up video, I don't know if I said it in this one already, but but if that berserk, however that berserk campaign does, I hope that they're paying him really, really well for the work that he does. Because this guy is gold. He is comic gold, Jerry. <laughs> how much does Ted Danson get paid? <laughs> Oh, it's funny. I caught. I I always catch mistakes in my videos. I was telling my friend James. He's nervous when he does his videos, that uh, he'll stutter or uh, you know not. Um, I'm kind of, I like I'm cleaning up his frackly lines. Um, he was like he's like I pause too much and I'm like dude. I'm like I make mistakes in every videos. Yesterday I meant to say the dice era of comedy and I said dice area, and it's like I mean it just shit happens when you do these videos, especially if you're on the fly. This is great. Man, this guy is so freaking good. I really wanted to learn from this. I mean, it's I don't really draw like this, but I just think that there's so many takeaways from this that uh, it was just... He's got it all. There's pieces in here that are so good. His Daredevil uh, Chinatown stuff is amazing. I'm assuming that he lays this zip in himself... It's possible that Matt does it, the colorist, but I don't think so. We'll kind of scoot. I have a lot of files open, so we'll move a little fast through some of the more repetitive stuff as we go along because there's a lot of really incredible work, so we can really kind of soak in this. This is another one with the planning on this is really crazy, so let's do this really quick. I'm going to grab the level tool and try to remove some of the gray. And then I can grab this. I think this will. Oh, it's on burn. Let me just get out of this for a second. I'm gonna put it on the dodge tool so I can bleach out his uh, pieces sometimes, like this. You know, it's possible that the black and white, just this area right here that we're focused on right now, could look something like this, like where the top of his hair is more. Um, like this is what what the top of his head looks like and probably this is all gone too this is just artifacting artifacts from uh, another thing but you know it's really neat looking isn't it 
Really, really good. God, there's this page that I have open. I mean, everything is incredible. Look at this freaking establishing shot. And at times I see reference in his work and, and a little bit of photos or maybe 3D models. Not a lot, just a little bit. So, I mean, he's definitely using, he's using everything at his disposal that he needs to produce the best looking work. And I, and I like that and I respect that, you know. Why not? You know, he's got a lot of shit to get done. This guy could clearly draw this stuff. Sometimes you can't take forever on something that isn't going to mean that much. But, you know, a shot like this, he's just drawing it. So good. I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't feel like the zip tone or the screen tone always worked in the comic book, but it, I was looking at it digitally, okay? Looking at it in person in a comic as opposed to the digital file is, is a different experience, but, but at times on the computer screen, it sometimes made the art look a little, a little um, fuzzy, a little more fuzzy than maybe it, it could look, but this is another great one. God dang. Let's remove some of the gray. So let's go. I'm going to turn the file grayscale. I'm going to mess with the levels just a little bit first. I'm going to try to remove this lighter gray in the background. And then I can have the dodge tool. But again, there's a, there's a possibility that when he finishes the piece... It looks a bit more like this. Probably he knocked out the line, like meaning that the, the line work on his face probably was inked and then he just isolated it and turned it gray. But the, the original might have looked a bit more like this. And I mean, I would be so nervous to mess around with it, but then you go back and you look at what he put in behind it and you just go, damn, dog. Woo, good stuff. See, here is a good instance of him in the process of working on it. This is what his... Um, you know, like the underdrawing looks. But here, this is, this again, oh, I'm spotting stuff that I think is digital. Like these lines right here, he's using, some of these holding lines are from his original layout, I think. I'm looking at them and they, like, they look like digital ruled lines, even though this is very pixelated. It's a little hard to tell. This, you can tell, is like hand-drawn. But some of these straight lines look like they might have been dropped. And you can tell sometimes by the panel boards. Now, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. The edges are kind of the tell, but again, it's a little hard to see because the pixelation, this looks drawn. You can see it's got, pens will leave little sort of anomalies. So here's his layout. Okay, you know what? A lot of the lines I was keying in are in here. These lines in particular, some of these, but you can see that that like the stuff that I was saying that he didn't is there. Okay, so the, the yeah, so he probably turns most of this blue and then leaves some of these black lines in. They're probably on different layers. So his holding lines, quote unquote, meaning the black lines that are going to remain when he prints out his blue line or whatever. He may print out. This is another recommendation that I would make for people out there that I don't hear artists saying is look. In the computer age, you've seen me isolate gray and remove gray from these pages all, all again and again and again. You don't need to work over literally a blue line. You can use different shades of color um, because ultimately Photoshop doesn't give a shit what color it is. I mean, it's like, um, maybe I'm not completely right on this, but anyway, like say you were going to do your piece in a light green and I went like this. So let's take a brush really quick. So my blue line is actually a green line. I've got I've got it all over the piece. Uh, let me do this on another layer. Uh, well, no, you know what? Let's try it like this first. I just want to see what it'll do. So this is my blue blue line. <laughs> all right. Now when I'm going into remove things, hold on. Let's see if this works. Uh, wait. Go backwards. Cancel. Uh, Command L. I want to see if this pulls it out. It's going to it's obscure the line. Yeah, so it removes it. Yeah, so the thing is, is whatever color, whatever color you actually use for your blue line, you can select it and remove it within reason. So you should be able to clean up your piece without it being like a nightmare. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's, a, I've, I've done videos where I show how I remove the blue. I've got actions set up in here for it where it's like, I just, I mess with the hue, saturation, colors. I just hit a button and it runs through the process. It's the same as like in Clip Studio. They've just done the action for you and you hit one button and it does it, but mine's the same way. 
people think Clip Studio is superior in that thing. It's like I did this once a year ago or two years ago. I've never had to touch it again. I, I hit one button and my, my page goes blue. So anyway, yeah. And here, and so the panel border was, he had enough lines coming out of it from the sketch that, that I thought that, that maybe this panel border wasn't um, digital, but it is, you can see. So this is all done on its own on own layer, and that remains in the original art within reason, my, is my guess. All right, so let's shut this. It's cool. Like I said, we wanted to reverse engineer this shit so we can understand how to use our digital tools and our traditional tools in a magical blend that captures the spirit of 2020 and not 2000 or 1998 unless you like that thing i kelsey shannon and i have been talking about art and we both love um the organic quality of a lot of the art that was produced in the 80s and 70s and 90s and so um you know but we're aware of the digital tools and so it's this thing where you start to try to come up with ideas to blend the organic quality of original art. this is great man obviously when you see stuff like this you immediately i'm gonna sorry my thing was locked up it wouldn't get smaller i want to make it smaller these boots are great though very frank miller but you know anything high contrast is going to have a little bit of a frank miller vibe this is a nice little panel just a little beat and this this could very well be a white cup that he went in with um, some sort of clip art and did this, or maybe he did the clip art himself, and then he can use that on any cups that he wants. You know, again, it's using the digital tools to help you out, um, but still, one retaining an original piece of art, and two having a quality like this where you can actually have stuff that digital just can't get. You know, it, it can and it can't. I can always sort of sense digital line art, you know. As much as people try to bury it in the mix, um, it never looks quite the same for some reason. It'll get there. It'll get better and better. It's it's. This is when you can't tell. As if you're looking at it on a computer, sometimes it's a little harder to tell. This is cool. Oh, that's really nice. So, and again, any of my um, observations on this work are just my speculations on it. It's not fact. So if you have a different opinion or you think that there's a different approach, or in fact there is a different approach, totally cool. Oh, you can see. So he must be doing this in Photoshop. That's a Photoshop icon. So he might not be working in Clip Studio, or he maybe he works in both. But I'm pretty sure that's the Photoshop rotate hand. It's cool. I kind of wondered, it looked like a lot of the white that he did on his pieces were on the original, like he was using either some sort of um, white uh, drawing pen, it could even be a crow quill with white ink on it, or a brush, but I definitely was getting the impression too that he might go in digitally and sort of add a little bit more to um, uh, help it along the way. So let's go back into full screen mode. So this is a comic convention sketch and it's beautiful. I would like to actually see a page of interior art printed out, and I want to see a couple of things. We're going to look for, does he retain the digital black ink lines, the holding lines that he had uh, set up? And then also, what color does he actually print his printout if, if uh, he does? I'm nearly sure that he is working over a printout and not lightboxing the final. And that's not to say that every piece, but uh, that's my idea right now. This is great, man. Yeah, he and Lee Weeks completely blew my mind this year. I love both of their work, and I've become just a gigantic fan. They're incredible. This is so good. It almost looks like he has lettering on his chest. Looks like a word. Z-H-N. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, I mean, it looks to me like the, that gray was all put in after, so that's kind of the piece, you know? And it looks great. Kelsey, what do you think? <laughs> He's laughing right now. We love art, right? We're, we're art nerds. You're going to be on my comic nerd for sure show. For show. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about all kinds of nerdy stuff. All geekery. All our... <laughs> I'm going to live stream this week. I'm just going to put it out there. Either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to live stream, and I'm going to do like a live auction. We'll ha we'll hang and talk about art and stuff like that. It won't be the show, the comic nerd for show. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, and I'm going to start, um, I'll, I'll do some live auctions where we can sell some original art. And uh, I'm actually going to move a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm going to purge a ton of shit um, over the next, oops, sorry, I tried to actually remove any personal photos of his, so I apologize for that. Um, uh, but this is all from his Instagram, so they are public pictures. But uh, yeah, if you, I'll have links to not only um, their crowdfunded book right now, but also to his Instagram, so you could support him there. And I'll, I'm, I might even look to see if he has an art dealer, because um, if he does, I can link to that as well. So links in the description box. Please support his work. I'm excited for Berserk. If it looks anything like this, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Well, I know it's going to be incredible. There's no way it's not. This dude is way too good. Like I said, we'll move through some of this stuff quicker. So these are always fun. God bless Instagram, man. We would never, ever have access to all this stuff now. And it's interesting because I credit artists for, for going this way. Meaning that it was like... It became where it wasn't enough to just share the work that you had done finished. Is is more and more artists became generous with their process. Then more and more artists had to step up to sort of like compete with a level of interest. So it benefited everyone, you know, that we get to see stuff like this. I'm always very nervous to show drawings this loose. I was telling Kelsey yesterday that I posted a piece on Instagram that was a sketch that was kind of kind of at this stage of the thing, and I really was like regretting it like afterwards i was like oh man people are gonna think i suck and it's stupid and why did i post the, such a loose sketch they're gonna hate me i just want people to like my art not judge me and uh you know then you see guys like him that do it and it's like once you rip that band-aid off then it's like you're liberated to uh, uh participate in posting sketches and not feel like everything you do has to be at god level so this is another one where i'm gonna guess that this stuff probably wasn't on the OG and, and this too, but he, this might have been black. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It's a lot of planning. This dude is brilliant. This is cool. And this could be a knockout, but it may not be. That's really cool. I was I I think it's really fun to see his actual traditional sketches. So we see a little bit of a drawing behind this. You see this, like a little bit of a sketch here. So that could be his pencils. I mean, it looks to be, but if as we see sequential art, if he shows any photos of him working on sequential art like this, we're gonna be able to tell what was what. We'll see if he does it. Some people don't like to give you a peek behind the curtain. They'll keep it hid. I already said I, I I know two two or three very very famous comic book pencilers at Marvel that have been using 3D models in their work for even for figures. I think for a long time and never ever said a word about it. Never, but I could see it in their work, and I I I acknowledged it. It's not a big deal, but it is interesting that they've never ever uh, said a word about it. This guy doesn't use models. He just draws like a badass. <laughs> for his figures, for sure. There's no models. This is like, oh man, look at that. This is great. This looks like a digital sketch. It's really cool. Man. Yeah, so this is him finishing it up and going in with his uh, grays. Oh my god. This is cool to see. Show us a photo of one of your pages on the board. Oh, that's cool. God, look at that gesture. Damn. Dude, he's so good. I love this right here. That's a really nice shape. It's just a fun cylinder with a real nice pop to it. This is great. You can really feel the planes. He's got actually some figure drawing studies that he did. This is great, too. God, like, look at this. Yeah, he has some, some like, arm studies and a few little things that were really, really cool. This is neat. It would be fun to see this original, how he did the background. Wow. It's a smart way to lay stuff out, man. 
you could definitely do high contrast stuff this way. It's really, really good. Gosh. Man, look at that. You can see he cut the eye out and moved it just the tiniest bit. Oh, even this. Yep, this is a traditional artist using digital tools in a very, very intelligent way. I highly, highly uh, praise him for this because that's what it's about, man. We're trying to move shit forward. This is great. God dang. Wow. This is probably one of the most epic Daredevil pieces that I've ever seen. I'm going to throw it out there. I get a little bored with him in the city. A jungle adventure in, in sort of like Upland <laughs> would be very cool. What is going on here? Man. Yeah, that is all win. That is so cool. I love it. What character is this in the background? I don't know. Is that is that the character from Chinatown? I think it is. I think it's the, the, the character that was running around the other costume. I'll point him out when I see him. I, th I think that's who it is. This is cool. America. <laughs> wow, look at that. Dude. There we go. Look at that. Is this his layout? I think this is like a digital layout. Wow. Or is this, it, a lot of this looks digital, like the lines, like those are definitely digital lines. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm so confused. This is like, I mean, this is all like a layout. Oh, it's freaking awesome. Damn. That's so cool. I'm curious if if uh, if he actually left it as like a white silhouette, or if he was if he went in and did some of his uh, like gray sculpting on it. We'll see if they if he shows it again later, or if I have a shot of the book. I, he he generally will show his pieces a few times in different iterations. This is cool. This is a good way to like uh, uh, previs your paintings, and you know it's interesting. I'll bring this up because uh, I've I've thought about throwing this out in videos like this, and I think this is actually appropriate time. Is what do you think? Jack Kirby and someone like Frank Frazetta would be doing now. I personally believe that Frazetta would would do things like this. He would he if he had digital tools. From what I understand, and, and many of you may not know this, uh, his his grandson or his granddaughter was saying that Frank loved video games. Believe it or not, loved to play Nintendo. In fact, isn't that funny? But uh, Frank Frank loved technology and he loved cameras and he loved all that stuff. And even though he was an incredible fantasy painter, it wouldn't surprise me at all if if you gave Frank Photoshop and and you know uh, a Cintiq that he wouldn't use it as a tool to plan his his pieces i'm not saying that he would end up being a digital painter although i'm sure he would be able to paint the shit out of digital paintings but why not you know why not use this stuff what do you think would jack kirby and frank use digital tools i i think that they both would i think that they might ultimately do traditional art with them but i don't know let me know in the comments section what do you believe who are some other artists would have would busema if he was 40 years old right now what would he be doing i think he'd be doing a crowdfunded book <laughs> kirby would have crushed it can you imagine if the, if like he went like all oh, you know what marvel's not treating me well dc's not treating me well and did a crowdfunded book oh my god do gangbusters that's old-fashioned term gangbusters so here uh, what is this? Is this a layout or is this a finished piece? It's a little difficult to tell. It looks like it's a prelim of some sort, but this is interesting. You can really see these hard lines that he used by, you know, blocking stuff in. Again, probably with the marquee tool in the paint bucket, uh, if he's using Photoshop, which I kind of think that he is, and then he sort of draws in there stuff. But look at this back here. This looks like marker to me almost. I can't tell. Some of this stuff is forensically complex for me. Let's see. Get at it. It's got to be a prelim, right? 
it's interesting too because then it makes me wonder is okay so if this is a prelim and he's going to do this piece and he wants to do it traditionally at some point he has to decide what's actually going to be on the original artboard like does this building stay in the original piece or is this one where he goes you know what that one i'll drop in in gray on the the other thing i don't want to deal with a black building back here with this or does he put them all in like these look like he would eventually do them in gray you know like uh in in photoshop maybe after the fact we'll see if we see this original um and maybe we have already and i'm just clueless so here's another one this looked to be all on one board, but it may not be. He may have done this figure on its own sheet and then done this background as, as another one. I don't know. I'm just wondering because it's a lot of overlapping stuff. But, you know, he may have laid it out that way. We'll see. If we he said, I want to see his original art boards. I might actually, it's funny, I may actually see. If he has an art dealer, I would be very, very curious to see what the original boards look like. Um, so I might, I, I'm after I'm done working today, I might actually go check out. This is great. It's funny because at times, so I see little things in his work occasionally. Sometimes it will remind me a little bit of Lee Weeks. Sometimes I see like a little bit of maybe like Brian Hitch or Alan Davis. Sometimes I see a little Jim Lee or Frank Miller or Mazzuchelli, but it's always Ron's work, but it is funny how there's little similarities between some of these guys. This is great too. Is this digital or traditional? I can't tell. It looks... It could be a finished piece digitally. Some of these lines, again, you can see that these look like digital lines. You see the, the those blunt ends on it. So... Yeah, really, really interesting. He really just has mastered these tools. He created a badass workflow. This is cool. I like all these little chips of white in there. It's kind of got a Alex Maleev sort of thing this is great told you guys this would be fun so this is kind of pre uh i don't know if this is a commission or from a page but this is almost like his pre pre digital oh yeah dude the black and white piece of this is so badass when you see this i need to check out this book maraca oh i get it maraca this was incredible. This is what it's very Jim Lee when you see it in black and white. Actually, it's funny. Like, it's like this dude was born to draw death blow. How have I never seen this freaking book? Blurry. Uh, digital? I think it's digital. It's a shame that he doesn't do this traditionally. It's, oh, you know, it's on a cover interesting it's got such a digital feel to it maybe not maybe it's just the like you know again when stuff is scanned if you tweak the saturation like if I go and lower the saturation on it a little bit then all of a sudden it's you know what I mean it starts to go more into a range where you go and also the levels like he may have gone in and tinkered with it that's cool wonder how big that original drawing is because that's a lot of like little strokey shapes this is cool <laughs> he is so good man wow john romina jr right <laughs> god dang I know, James, you love Daredevil. This is probably a good video for you. You're always drawing Daredevil. Man, that's such a great pose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Oh, I guess that's smoke. I was like, what is that? Dude. Dude. Look, she's sad. Man. guy is ridiculous <laughs> I'm gonna watch this video so many times today while I work I'm just gonna throw it on and enjoy the art and look up occasionally while I'm doing my thing as tempting as it is to try to incorporate digital in my workflow I just don't think that it's it would take me longer right now it would it would actually slow me down and i don't want to get slowed down i think it's great for layouts but yeah i don't think that i could the process that he's doing like he's got it down i'm not i i 
I learned everything traditionally, and it's just it's where I'm the most comfortable right now. A big hurdle for me was the the cleanness of my pages. I always wanted my pages like pristine clean, like where you could never even see that there was a sketch. And once I got over that hurdle, all of a sudden it was like I was kind of free to roam. I've talked about this before. So Chris Boccolo and David Fincher, two artists that I inked, and both of them I worked with for several years. I worked with Chris for about two two and a half years and I worked with David on and off I think for like three three years maybe um both of them are very heavy-handed pencils this is a beautiful drawing by the way it's really really good and I love the up, the upshot kind of feel of it with this perspective but uh yeah they're both heavy-handed pencilers and they really would actually score the paper like when you would try to erase their pages sometimes you literally couldn't get the pencil dent out of the paper and sometimes on Bacolo in particular I would actually have to use white out to white out the pencil marks because I couldn't erase them they were so dark and um you know for me being such a huge Travis fan I was one of these beautiful clean pencils and it was kind of more how I naturally drew but what I found is it it clinched me up you know it got me like artistically constipated <laughs> where I couldn't draw because I wanted it so neat and it's like no 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 dude it's funny because I'm going to bring up Kelsey again Kelsey and I were talking about that we would love to see uh Mark Silvestri pencils from back in the uncanny x-men and um like Wolverine days you just can't find that stuff and see what it looked like or or I know they have the Marvel Essentials so you're going to see black and white versions of Dan Green's inks but to see more of that original art and really be able to pour over the actual techniques this is great and it's a fun different style um, but man those would be great study tools is to see Mark's original pencil art for some of those books so hopefully someday photocopies will surface again the marvel stuff not necessarily top cow i know that there's top cow pencils uh, floating around but i've never seen at, at least very much wolverine or his uncanny x-men work in pencil this is cool again setting it up digital man this dude is a badass oh i love the hulk it's interesting because that honestly if if you asked me who this was i don't know if i would have guessed him the face looks more cartoony this could be a little bit older it's still cool the lighting on the figure is really cool in fact i love this man he made that so chunky and this is great all the sort of contortions of the muscles and the scrunchness oh god i almost pressed Control q i would have ripped my own head off this is cool i've never seen this book this is nice man these characters look great oh my god he's so good This looks older. Uh, look at, like, even the folds. It's funny, because he would... I, I mean, I don't know what this is exactly. The perspective looks a little tiny bit off on this. This doesn't really look like the way that he would draw a jacket. But maybe... I don't know what this uh, that was. It was funny last night. I was trying to remember this one artist's name that I always forget. And it was Liberatore. And I, I saw some of his work on um, what is it, Zan Xerox or something? Zan Xerox? <laughs> it's weird shit. I always picture that weird character, like the lead character, and then I can never think of what it's called. <laughs> so I always ask people, I'm like, I don't know, it's like a guy with glasses and weird hair. This is nice. So this was a, a further back. This, this stuff starts to remind me a little bit of like Carlos Pacheco. Pacheco was so good. When, when Carlos Pacheco first came on the scene, he did, I think it was either The Flash or Impulse for DC at first. And then he went over to Marvel and did um, X-Universe and he did Bishop and a bunch of stuff. Uh, Avengers Forever. God damn, he was good. From what I understand, he was actually an art teacher wherever he was from. And uh, just kind of fell in the comics i haven't seen carlos pacheco's art in years i have no idea where he is yeah it's just funny so this is 2014 he really like almost had a little bit of a different vibe going back then it could just be the sketch i mean it's pretty like looks like a quickie that's cool man that's nice really cool oh yeah these are those studies i was talking about man so good I love this right here. 
that's really good. This is all nice. Yep, yep, yep. Probably have some arms coming next. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Damn. He's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. All these guys are badasses. Doug Mankey. They're all like, they They all look like they could be truck drivers. They're all handsome. And uh, then they draw like like uh, the the classic guys like Kirby and Buscema. It's funny. They're like the new generation of them. They're like, they could be lumberjacks or they could be uh, comic book artists. But they went this way. But they still like to bust heads. So it's like Doug lifts weights. This guy is choking people out in jujitsu. <laughs> Man, that is cool. Dude. He just looks like he has a lot of fun drawing. She's cute. Alright. Oh, it's a horse. What is going on here? It looks like shame. And then the horse is like, what did we just do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wolverine, Wolverine. <laughs> it's kind of got like the Frazetta back. Frazetta back. You don't say that often. Yeah, this looks like older stuff. It just goes to show that you can constantly improve because he was really good, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago. And he's just gotten better and better. The digital tools, I think, really actually like took him to another level. It's pretty cool. Maybe there's a takeaway in that that I'm not really noticing. This is a great hand. This is nice, too. Damn. Oh, wow. I'm amazed that this thing actually let me rotate it. I had so many files open, it wouldn't even open more. I maxed it out. Nope. Yeah, so this is a finished race. So he never really shows his finished artboards. That's another takeaway that I'm going to say based on this video is that we never, ever actually saw a photograph of him working on a traditional artboard. So then I, I do wonder if... Uh, there's got to be originals. I'll have to look after the video. I, don't have I mean, it's like I'm not going to go online and start looking around. But uh, yeah, this is really interesting. This has really been, I think, one of the better videos I've done in a while. I remember this... Oh, yeah, in the, um, or no, I'm thinking it was the Simon Lee video, my bad. There was a statue that he had with fish attacking a guy. This is really beautiful. Man, it's a solid figure. Really, really great. I don't know if that's death. When I originally saw it small, I thought it was death. We're getting towards the end here. These are nice. Man, what a trip. I this was so good. This was so fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, there's a page coming up that I opened just to show you. It was it was one of my favorite pages. It's a f interesting page to say as a favorite, but I'll explain why when we get to it. But there's a page coming up that I opened from Chinatown that I wanted to show you all. It's very, very cool. Uh, and then I'll be able to show you the gun example from the yesterday's video that I mentioned. We're kind of getting to the end. That's great. I love art like this. I just think it's so fun. It's It's overdone i think that it would lose its impact but you throw this and a couple of panels of your comic book it's a really really exciting and fun thing you know but like anything detail lack of detail this invert kind of look and stuff like that you know you want to make it count this is cool so 2015 when I get more familiar with his work, I'll understand what some of these breakdowns are for. This is great. God damn. This is from that... I'm going to guess this is from that Jason Aaron book. Whatever this is, this looks so badass. I could be wrong. It could be from something else, but... Jeez, Louise. Oh, I love it. Man, that is so cool looking. This is a good one, friends. This is a really, really good video. All my videos are good. But this one is really good. <laughs> Look at the Hulk. He knows. Hulk smash rich. 
run, run, run. Oh, I would love to see the original of this, how he did this. You can see these are digital lines. Those are for sure digital. Digital, digital, digital. Oh, that's cool. The guy, I don't know if it's if the if this person is still doing Dare, Daredevil, but there's someone that's been working on Daredevil on and off for the last year, and it could he could have done a long run. I don't follow Daredevil that closely, but whoever is working on Daredevil works digitally. I'm nearly sure, and pencils and inks and own stuff, they're really good. I can't think of the name. I think it's a European or like it, it's it didn't sound like an American name if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but man, the art is unbelievably good. It's so detailed. Like, there was a shot of Daredevil and I think, like, a girl, like, in his bedroom. Matt Murdock, or they were, like, in his apartment. And just the view outside of his apartment, it was incredible. I was, I felt like I was watching a comic book movie. <laughs> I say that because I'm trying to avoid, I don't want to compare comics, but this is the piece. So this really, really looks like a Jim Lee drawing to me. This in particular, really, I mean, it feels like, it really feels like Jim, and I know it's just a coincidence, but this is so Jim Lee to me. And this in particular, like, I literally feel like this is right out of, um, you know, Punisher or just, it's wild. But it's, this is all Ron. I, I don't want to um, detract from the art saying that. I'm just saying that, like, this captures a Jim Lee spirit. But again, if you look, I mean, this is all digital. So... I have to, I'm so confused. Does he draw these or is this done? <laughs> I don't know. People are laughing. This will be a, this comment section is going to be fire. <laughs> Good kind of fire. The kind of fire that burns. Love dragons. This is nice. In New Superman, Victor Bogdanovic and I got to do stuff like this. And funny enough, Victor is now a very excellent digital artist himself. He was then too, but he pencils and inks himself now all the time. And uh, yeah, he works He works in Photoshop. He doesn't use Clip Studio unless he switched. But he was doing just absolutely amazing work in Photoshop. I couldn't believe that he was actually drawing all this stuff. But you know, he's made like custom brushes that work for him and stuff like that. This is a great sketch. I remember looking at this yesterday. He's he's done a bunch of Conan stuff. I didn't open it all. We, I don't even know how many files we have left. I opened a ton. This is another interesting piece that I would love to see the original and see what it looked like. Because it's very, very interesting with all this gray. What the thought process was. Because this all looks like digital to me. Back here. It, yeah, it kind of all does, actually. I don't know, friends. And there's his banner. It's very nice. To Patrick. Okay, but I see, I still see digital. You've got me corn fused. <laughs> My head is spinning, spinning, spinning. <laughs> well, at the very least, you'll have some chuckles, and, and I'm sure that people were like really kind of tripping out on this art. <laughs> He's so damn good. Look at this. The actual, I think I have the original painting or the finished piece of this. It's actually very, very cool. So, Men of Wrath. Man, I need to check out that shit. Bull Man. I don't know who this is. Is that a... I, I, it's, the cape made me think Superman, but I don't think it's Superman. This is cool. Feel the rhythm with your hands. Look at that. Buying them. Really, really cool. <laughs> no. Alright, yeah, this piece. Pretty neat. It's different, you know. Very different. Look, you put a little texture back here. It's a renaissance, man. Silver Surfer. And this looks like another digital painting. It's so weird. Only weird because I, I always have thought of him as more of a traditional artist, but it's like, I, I 
doing a piece like this, I just wonder, like, is this a prelim for a painting that he did? And he just doesn't, uh, like, share those, like, on the thing. But, man, if, if I did something like this, I would go, all right, now it's time to hit the canvas and grab either acrylic paint or oils and, and uh, give it a go. You know, why not? Having an original would be nice. That's good stuff right there, man. That's what you want. Yeah, this book looks awesome. Okay, we're getting to the end here. These are little tiny Instagram posts. Hulk. Again, this feels a little hitchy. Hitchian. <laughs> I was I was always fascinated with the bottom of cars, the undercarriage. I don't know what they call it specifically, but I never knew what was on the bottom of a car. And I remember kind of before you could find everything on the internet more easily, um, Having, I needed to draw the bottom of a car one time, and I was just like, I don't know what the bottom of a car looks like. And it's, you know, if you're particular about that kind of stuff, it's annoying not knowing and not being able to figure out where the heck, you know, it's like, I can't just run to the grocery store and look through the magazine rack and find a, you know, maybe you can find an auto magazine that would show up, but pro I don't know. If they, a lot of times they don't show up. This is a great piece, too. This architecture here is really, really cool. Man, I learned so much from this video, and I still have so many questions, which actually kind of makes it fun. Okay. I'll shut my sliding window. It's getting hot again. The AC just came on. Yes, this is digital back here for sure. Let's do this really quick. I'm going to brighten it a little bit first, and then I'm going to remove this gray and see what we got. Really pay attention to this area here because it's going to be very interesting when I remove this. Yeah. And then let me just take this really quick. Kind of clean this up, the artifacting. And again, it's only speculation on my part if the original actually really kind of looked like this or not. But, like, look at that up there. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm assuming this is his boot. Yeah, this is his boot here. He might have drawn more, like a little bit of it might have kind of vanished a little bit. Here, let's make it a little darker so we can kind of really sort of goof it up. But look at his boot. Dude, that shit is so cool. Oh my God, art is so fun. Oh, and this was this was one of the examples I was giving. Like, look at how crooked these lines are. What, where, like, you know what I mean? I, I kind of, I always warn people. I'm like, hey, if you're going to work digital, you really need to watch what I call, I, you'll, you've heard me refer to it as pixel perfect lines, where you take the line tool and you just run it across stuff and you run it across stuff and you run it across stuff. It's a very anemic and kind of, not kind of, it's a boring line. I hate to say it, but it is. You don't want super flat lines. And pixel perfect looks weird. Uh, a traditional tool will have a little bit of an anomaly, even in Australia, like my cat knows. Am I upsetting you? You hear the passion. I just don't want people to have stiff art. But, um, yeah, so um, you, you definitely want to kind of be mindful of that. But there's a page that I, I have open that we're going to see in a second. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you the way that he did the guns. This is about as close as we've gotten to an original, but this is digital. This isn't this isn't a program, and you can see that this is a pixel perfect uh, panel border here. So he has an organic enough line on his figures and stuff like that that it doesn't look super weird. This was the page, so I'm going to turn this gray, and then I'm going to start removing the actual gray, and then we're going to look at these guns and how he drew them. It's not perfect because there's a lot of this um, screen tone on the piece, but I'm going to. Try to really zoom in and start removing like light gray. Do this a few times. So I'm just hitting Control L and then I'm grabbing the far right eyedropper and I can start to remove certain things. And this is how I clean up quote unquote blue lines is I'm just removing that. But your black line stays down. So that's why I'm saying in theory you could really have this any color or shade of gray if you wanted to print out your blue line gray. But with this screen tone, I mean, you can see it creates a real sort of maze of stuff. So let me do this and then I'm gonna, yeah, it's better. Oh, and it actually looks good on this panel. These were the guns that I wanted to show you. But, like, look at these guns. And I'll try to do this. I'm going to remove just a little bit more gray just to help the guns along. And then I'm going to take the dodge tool.
just to kind of remove this, but I want you to see sort of what what is down versus what uh, it looks like. So I thought it was pretty interesting. Again, it's not a perfect process, but but look at how he drew these guns, or use your imagination and kind of picture like what these these look like. And I kind of fried it a little too much, but but it's it's pretty neat, right? Like look at how much is open and. It doesn't look so ruled. There's stuff sort of like kind of crooked and whatnot. And then as we go backwards and start to see them come together, watch watch this panel start to come back together. This is why you guys need to go to my Patreon. I'm telling you, my Patreon is this shit all the time. I have a very inquisitive mind. I ha I'm obsessed with learning to the point that honestly, it, it's it's a problem. <laughs> I got a monkey on my back and it's called learning. But and then there's the final. And and you know, when you look at it in the book, they just look like really, really cool guns. And now we know that they're more loose, it's it's like more noticeable. Like you go, Oh yeah, I can see that, but you wouldn't really have noticed how organic they are, you know, on on their own. But they're they're you know, it's kind of that Sylvester vibe. It's it's if you draw it too literally, it can look a little boring. So we should be right at the end of this video now. I thought this was great. Again, this reminds me a little bit more of like Jim Lee, Death Blow, this panel in particular. And my the panel, the, the page that I, I grabbed to show you, this is that one shot that we were, oh no, it's a little different. This, this. Oh yeah, here's this, finished. It's cool, it looks great, right? Love this. Matt Mila did such a great go job coloring it. This page, I thought this was really, really cool. This middle panel to me is so clever and is just such a beautiful thing. So this is nice too. So panel one, we were talking about in the video a few days ago, how to make boring sequences look cool. This guy is a master of it. This is boring stuff and it would be very hard to make it look natural. Uh, you know, I mean, naturalistic where it kind of fits in your world. You have a really high likelihood of this looking kind of stiff and sort of, you know, eh. this is great. I feel like I'm in an office. You know, the characters are walking down the hallway. Um, let's look at <clears throat> I mean, gray for a second. Remove a little bit of the screen tone so we can kind of see. Yeah, it's a little better. It's tough because the screen tone is filling in a lot of the blanks, but, you know, her legs, you see how the dress sort of bleeds in. I mean, this is all stuff that he planned. Her, the edges of her jacket, her ears aren't really drawn. I mean, it's just something he's very aware, aware of. I'm sorry, this is a minute. All right, so let's go back to this. So, But then this middle panel here, I absolutely love. He's got a killer, killer down shot of these like um, interrogation rooms. And you've got the one guy either on a phone or he's waiting to be interrogated. It looks like he might be a cop. Like, oh, he he's might be, no? I was going to say maybe he's listening. In. This guy's on a phone, too. Um, this dude is maybe breaking down. And then these cops have actually been um, subdued. So it's all pounding heartbeats and sweet. I don't know what the storytelling is here. But anyway, but I thought that this was a fantastic page. Really, really clever use of camera angle creating a real sense of depth on a flat surface by doing this down shot it's really really good and uh yep i love it this is cool and then we're gonna have the volkswagen page next yeah this is cool i like this a lot this is really neat neat little touch so all right we should be at the end here and here's this beautiful piece in its full glory it's so good all right, if you're not fired up to draw now, you need to check your pulse, friend. No. Check out my Patreon. Even, you know what, if you go, I don't want to learn more from you, Richard. I just love your YouTube channel. I'll go over and give you a tip. You're gonna have full access anyway, 565 posts. All right, I love you all. Have a great day. Everyone stay safe out there. Um, keep one fist in the gold and one hand and something. I don't know what that saying is. Something. Who was that? All right. Bye.